excerpt was taken from the Full and Bloom interview with Badlands bassist Greg Chasen. You can listen to the entire interview at fullandbloom.com. Surgical Steel, didn't they have some kind of connection to Rob Halford? They did. There used to be a rock bar here called Mr. Lucky's. It was a rock bar downstairs, cowboy bar upstairs. And the guitar player in Surgical Steel, who at the time was my best friend, Hank Keeler, was out at watching. They used to bring California bands in. They were cover bands that would play there as a dance bar, but it was rock. And uh, I got a phone call from Jim Keeler about 11 o'clock at night saying he wanted to know if I was going to have the Jerry Cooney Holmes fight on pay-per-view, which I normally had all that stuff on pay-per-view, on that Friday night. And I said, actually, yeah, I am. Why? And he goes, I want to bring someone over. And I said, well, who is it? And he goes, Rob Halford. She said, yeah, right. Yeah, sure. So, lo and behold, he showed up with Rob Halford at my house. You know, and this is in Phoenix in, the, you know, like 81 or maybe beginning of 82. So, he Guys, you know, Priest was huge. Guys just didn't bring Rob Halford over to your house. So Rob came over and uh, hung out, watched the fight, and then he uh, knew we had a band, and he wanted to come and see us play the next time he was in town. So he came back into town, he arranged a gig, this outdoor place in Phoenix that this guy owned a warehouse, and he would put on... Uh, concerts there and he had charged five bucks to get in and they had beer it was completely illegal and uh so we let it know be known through the grapevine and then rob said i want to come up and play, sing some songs with you guys so we already did a bunch of priests and jeff martin uh, the singer from Ray rex this badland second drummer the one that's on blue highway and dusk was just joining surgical steel as our new singer and he's a big halford freak so rob showed up and we had let it be known through the grapevine that rob halford was going to be there and come up on stage and play with us and of course, half the people came to see Halford, and the other half came to see that we're hoping that it wasn't going to happen so they could yell at us and say how stupid we were. And sure enough, he came up, and we introduced him, and he came up and played the half a dozen songs, all priest songs, and uh, that kind of cemented the whole Surgical Steel. Surgical Steel became the biggest band in Phoenix in one night, based on that. I never heard anything from them, but I'd always see that ad in Hit Parader. Were you in the band at that time? No, I'd been kicked out by that. Okay, but go ahead with what Um, you were, I want you to finish your story. Well, every time Rob would come in town, he'd come and play with us. He would want to know, are we playing? And we would put on our own gigs. Uh, The band was big enough that we could rent out a bingo hall or a roller skating rink, whatever, and put a stage in there. And and Rob would show up and sing with us, and other local bands would be on the bill, too. And it was like pretty much a happening. And heavy metal was just, you know, the new wave of British heavy metal was real big. Priest was huge. Maiden was huge. Saxon was big. And then, you know, uh, a lot of the LA, you know, Motley Crue was starting to be big, and there was a lot of that going on. So we were right in the forefront of it. And Rob would be there, you know, to sing with us. And we got a lot of notoriety. We got some national hit parader wrote about it at one point, and so some other magazines did. And I was uh, really, you know, having a good time with that. And then when I got kicked out, you know, I thought for sure they were going to get a record deal because uh, Rob seemed to be interested in helping the band out. Um, and when I got kicked out, I thought, well, there's my shot. My shot just went right out the window. And I was good friends with Rob. Uh, he would give me musical advice, you know, on record company stuff, contract stuff, manager stuff, all that kind of stuff. You know, uh, I didn't really care how we sang behind the realms of death. How do you keep them keeping your manager from ripping you off? That thing. So, um, I kind of lost all that in just one fell swoop. So I wasn't too happy about it. Great experience though. Yeah, no, no doubt. It's, it's almost amazing that they didn't get signed just off of the hype. Were you playing to like 200 people or 500 people or what was a typical show uh, like? Probably somewhere between 750 and 1500 and then build a stage out in the desert and you could get two or 3,000 people out there and by the time you throw Rob na- Rob's name into the mix, every time we played, he didn't show up because sometimes he'd be out of town because he bought a house here. Right. But every time we showed up, we'd show up thinking Rob was going to be there. But he did sing with us probably when I was in the band six six or ten times, and then after that, even a lot more. They had a record deal on the table twice, and for some reason, it didn't happen. Uh, I know RCA was going to sign them, and somebody else was. And at the last minute, uh, it got pulled out from underneath them. When I was in the band, I was the main writer, and so our music was somewhere between Iron Maiden and Older Priest. And then when I left the band, um, they, they were so enamored with, the more commercial priest um, that they started writing stuff that was like the most commercial sounding priest thing, but even kind of even more commercial almost it had an LA flavor to it so it, you could hear some of the Motley Crue poison sort of that sort of thing 
mixed in with a little bit of a priest sort of thing, especially with a priest image. So I think they kind of lost. They, they started to try to write songs to get a record deal and to write a hit song, and I think that ended up costing them in the end. Didn't Rick Fox even join the band for a while? Yes, he did. He joined it for a, for a bit, and uh, nothing was happening. And then they brought me in again uh, under the guise that they were going to get this record deal, and the guitar player and I were still really good friends. So I went out there for about another six or seven months, and it wasn't going to happen. I could just see that it, it, they would kind of lost their way and they lost their buzz. I think the band probably ended for good around 87. Um, and the only guy in the band from the original band was the guitar player. And he had a bunch of different guys in it. Um, and at that t- in, in early 88 is when I, uh, sometime in 88 is when I auditioned for Badland. So right. at that point, I really thinking about surgical steel anymore. Sure. I mean, that's a long time to go. 81 to, to 87 or 88, they were still going. That's a long time to, to um, be a club act, I would think, at that time. Yeah, when I was in the band, we didn't play clubs. We did. We opened for, at, at one club, we opened for Crocus. And then another club, we opened for uh, Point Blank. And we opened for Uriah Heap at another club. But on our own, we never played clubs. We would rent a hall, like I said, a bingo hall or an ice skating rink or go out in the desert. That way, we we had complete control of what we played, how loud we were, and how much money we made. We didn't have to go play at a club and they make, you know, we, we could make five five or six thousand dollars playing a desert party easy. Isn't that incredible? So you're fully making a living at that time then, right? Well, the thing that I was very cognizant of is that you can't play every week in an original band that has a limited production budget. So, you know, you couldn't play... Maybe you played every six weeks, and you had to make sure you didn't play in the same part. You know, you were trying to spread it out. One of the things that was an issue for me while I was in the band is they wanted to keep playing all the time, and I said, we're going to burn ourselves out, which is what they did within two or three years. You know, even though they kept it going for a few years after that, the novelty had worn off. 